title, Paying Off a Mortgage, on a Deschutes County farm surrounded by evergreen trees, Sarah Lee Lawrence, an owner of Rain Shadow Organics and Pitchfork Tea Ranch, stands by a summer vegetable garden. She wears a checkered ball cap with mirrored sunglasses perched on the brim. We're here at Rain Shadow Organics, which my husband and I started back in 2010, and we have expanded our land base onto our ranch. A red-brown bull in an open field. Some of our favorite neighbors lived at Pitchfork Tea Ranch for a long time. You know, when you're out here living and working on the land, having the land be contiguous is really nice. And so my husband had told them for years if they ever wanted to sell to please let us know um, before putting it on the market. And so they did. And we were able to pull together um, some investment and then, of course, uh, working with the Northwest Farm Credit at the time, which is now Ag West, um, to be able to put an actual mortgage together on the ranch. Part of the plan was to be able to secure a conservation easement, which has taken a really long time. And uh, without continued investment from our partner, the easement would probably not have worked. Um, and it will definitely be very welcome and a massive relief when it does come, uh, but it is not fast. Natasha Bellis, Conservation Director for Deschutes Land Trust. The snowy peak of Mount Jefferson rises above rolling hills behind her. Farms and ranches have a lot of their assets locked up in real estate. When a landowner sells an easement, this allows them to access some of that asset for use on things like mortgage or investing it in other properties that add to their operation. The Land Trust has been working with Sara Lee and Ashanti of Pitchfork Tea for the past couple of years. Um, we just received full funding for the easement this past May. Um, that was kind of a hurdle for us, but new avenues of funding have opened up, and so we're really excited about that. Right now, we're in the process of drafting the easement and management plan and doing those due diligence items, like searching the title and getting boundary surveys. We hope to wrap it up by the end of the year. The timeline for developing an easement varies with each individual landowner and piece of land. In general, we start that, the process by developing a relationship with the landowner and running through sort of what the easement process is. And that can take anywhere from one to six months. And then we, depending on the easement project, will move into funding the easement and developing the actual legal document and doing the due diligence associated with that. And that can take anywhere from a year to 18 months. When the land trust is working with a landowner on a prospective easement, we really encourage them to seek independent advice from trusted professionals, accountants, attorneys, and especially their lenders if they have a mortgage on the property. In his office, Jess Sarsfield, Relationship Manager, AgWest Farm Credit. I would say from the lender's perspective, if the borrower is going down this road, so the landowner, you'd really want to understand what, what their plans are. And the borrower slash landowner could use his lender as a resource to strategize and understand what the implications are gonna be of the easement, how it's gonna maybe affect their business, how it's gonna affect their financials. And so really having that conversation early on, as soon as an opportunity is presented, um, and definitely as soon as the easement is prepared, you'd want to share that with the lender as soon as possible as well. And that's because the lender has a security interest. And the other factor is the purchaser of the easement is going to want to know where the lender stands on this. They're going to want to know the direction that the lender is taking. And so getting that draft copy of the easement is going to be very important. From a lender's perspective, there's really four points that are going to be looked at. They're going to be value of the land. How is this easement going to affect the land value? There's marketability. With this easement in place, if the lender needed to sell that piece of property, how saleable is it? And then there's utility. How is this easement going to affect the utility of the land, now of the real estate? And then the fourth point would be lien position. The lender's going to want to make sure that they're still in a first lien position once the easement is done. When you come to your lender with the request to sign an easement, what you're asking your lender to do is to subordinate their security interest. So the lender has a security interest in the land if they have a loan on it. And 
the easement is going to need to be in a senior position to that security that the lender has. And subordinating is just the lender accepting that that easement is in a priority position to them, which is what the easement purchaser is going to need so that their interest is secured as well. The lender may also require a pay down. So there is a devaluation and they may want to be compensated for that. There could also be other scenarios where the lender isn't wanting to have that collateral anymore and they want to do a substitution of collateral. There's always the possibility that the lender does not want to sign the easement and subordinate to that. So a good reason to talk to your lender early. Really every easement process or every easement situation is going to be slightly different. And you can use your lender as a soundboard for understanding not only the process, but how it may benefit you and what some of those restrictions may mean for you as well. A rose gray horse grazes. Pitchfork tea cattle stroll down a red dirt path, passing through the shade of sprawling juniper branches. Sarah Lee. Even though we sell all of our beef direct to consumer, it is very difficult to produce beef and pay any kind of a mortgage at all. When we started considering the possibility of buying the ranch and putting the loan package together with the help of our relationship manager at um, Northwest Farm Credit, we went through a, a lot of creative um, ideas to, to really bring it together, um, including our cattle ranching and hospitality and parceling off some small pieces and also the conservation easement as a big part of um, servicing our mortgage. I would really recommend that people build relationships with their land trust representatives, the NRCS. Um, you know, it's a it's a process. It's a lot of paperwork, and they are extremely helpful. And to go in and spend time with them and let them help you do that paperwork and make sure that it's complete um, and not waiting to the last minute, having them out to your land, knowing, you know, why is this important? It's important to understand why your land matters and what you're willing to do before you even reach out to people. And also, you know, having to do the fundraising and, and putting all that together. You're not really doing it yourself. So it's really important that people are valuing your work and your land. And to be able to tell that story is essential. For me, it was our ability to, you know, essentially keep the land safe forever, even if it's not us farming it. And in the meantime, be able to afford to farm it ourselves. Jess. I would advise my customers, no matter what the source of funds are, whether it's from an easement or just part of a purchase and sale agreement, but maybe more particularly in an easement, is to understand who all the stakeholders are and to keep an open and regular communication with them. And then you're going to be speaking with a land trust as well and possibly an attorney, tax accountant, but understanding the resources you have and the team that's going to get you there and keeping that communication with them is going to be really important. Natasha. My recommendation for any landowner thinking about doing a conservation easement or that's curious about a conservation easement would be to reach out to your local land trust early in the process. We have a ton of information that we'd love to share with you um, and get to know you and your property better. When we're able to convey the easement and we actually are, you know, paid for it, being able to take that to our lender and hopefully reduce our monthly payments uh, by re-amortizing the loan and, and having a lot less burden from a really high mortgage uh, will be a massive relief and possibly having funds that could be distributed elsewhere, but... In my mind, the relief is probably like, the best part, <laughs> you know. Water sprays from a sprinkler system in crisscrossing arcs over a field. Ordering grass and evergreen branches with whiskery needles sway in a light breeze. This program was created thanks to generous funding from AgWest Farm Credit, Harperton Foundation, Land Trust Alliance, and Roundhouse Foundation. Logo for Oregon Agricultural Trust.